What's up guys, welcome to Wasted Space and we're back in Space Engineers with the second episode of my Don't Panic tutorial series in which we're going to have a look at wheels and in particular how wheels have changed with the recent friction changes that we had in a couple of updates ago. So in front of me here I've got a whole bunch of vehicles to test out and prove a few points but the first thing I'm going to do is actually talk about something that's nothing to do with wheels and entirely to do with everything else. So if I jump into this car which is just loosely set up for driving around first thing I'm going to do is try and drive on these blocks and you'll notice that as we turn we have easily enough grip to actually roll the car. So fortunately I've done this quite a bit so I've got used to holding it. But yeah, we are capable of rolling the car very, very easily. But if we then jump off of this surface and jump down onto the voxels, what was a car that would very easily roll now becomes a car that doesn't even really steer. You'll notice that we are eventually starting to steer across this surface, which isn't quite flat by the way, which is why we're bouncing off the ground. There's a couple of, a couple of lumps in this, but you'll notice that while controllable, it isn't something you would say is the same or even similar to what it was like on the blocks up here. And it even goes further than that. So this car has been set up loosely to drive around on Sectan's modular roads, which are very, very cool. And I'll put a link down to that down below because it's something that's kind of got me thinking about how to make a race car in particular. But they're these things. And again, these also have a different friction value. So you need to set up your vehicle depending on what you're driving on. And this is something that's very prevalent now and wasn't quite so much before. So now we understand that depending on what we're driving on, it's going to make a difference what we do with the car and also what we do as far as how much grip we're expecting to get. And it, you know, it does vary dramatically between something that you can't really drive round corners on to something that will roll over the second you time, try and turn. So the next thing we need to look at is the various suspension settings and what they all do. So I'm just going to run down these briefly. So first up, we've got the steering controls, and these are reasonably straightforward to understand. So we've got our steering angle, which literally dictates how far the wheels are allowed to turn in any direction. And the main reason you'll be using this, other than to try and make a vehicle more controllable, is to stop it from hitting its own bodywork. So if we turn this up the whole way and then try and turn, you'll see that that wheel there is actually colliding with the bodywork now. So at times you'll want to go and change these values to get something that's not going to cause you problems. Now Next up, we've got steering speed and steering return speed. And these work basically the same as each other, but basically what we're doing here with these is changing how fast the wheels turn to their maximum travel, and then how fast they come back to being straight again. So if we whack these both up to full, and I would never recommend doing this, you'll see that that wheel on the left turns super duper quickly, goes back to the middle super duper quickly, and the one on the right that we didn't change has got a sort of sluggish movement in comparison. Let's go and put those back to normal because as you've seen that's made it very very fast, far too fast to make anything stable out of this and move on to the remaining settings down here and these are kind of the more interesting ones. So start off with the easy two which is the power section up here. You've got power and friction and they're kind of connected. Power is obviously how much power you're getting out of these electric motors that are essentially powering our wheels and it's a good idea to try and keep this reasonably high. Obviously anytime you're turning this down you're turning down your potential of going quicker. So if you set everything else up right, you should be able to get this to a position where it's sitting right up at the top like that. And that's partly down to friction, and friction is what you would expect. It's how much friction you get out of your wheels. The thing that's changed recently with this is how much you can expect to actually need. Now you'll notice that on this surface we've been rolling over. That's because even 10% is too much for this sort of surface. So if we were to go here and what I found, it helps to have difference between the front and rear wheels, as you would expect to have on a real vehicle. And if we change these fronts down to something like 1.5 and then the rears we want a little bit more friction on because obviously this is going to help the car understeer rather than oversteer or roll which is something we want to try and avoid if we can so on the rears we want a little bit more than that but we're still only going to make it something like say three really really low values and what that's now going to do if i turn the handbrake off is mean that oh we're still we're still rolling a bit we've still got too much and that's going to be down to our suspension so let's jump out of here and we can go and have a look at the suspension settings. We've got these sort of vaguely where we might want them. So let's flip this over and it does like to roll this vehicle. Drop it down and have a look at the suspension settings. So there's four suspension settings there and two of them are relatively straightforward and make quite a lot of sense, which is the suspension travel and the height. And then two of them are very poorly explained, which is the damping and the strength. So firstly, we've got the height offset. And as you might imagine, this is literally, you can see that left wheel there. We're moving ourselves up and down on the suspension. That's how high off the ground we're being held in the suspension. So that would be completely in the middle. Uh, it says some funny value there. That's not actually what it's set at. It's set at naught. And that's sitting at its exact normal level. And we can choose to either raise the suspension or lower the suspension down, sorry, for some reason these numbers are reversed. Don't ask me why. Or 
lower or raise the suspension up like that. And what we're going to do with this vehicle, because it's kind of a racy sort of vehicle, is we're going to take all of our suspension and we're going to drop it way down. So down, say, about 20, let's say. Give ourselves a little bit of movement in this direction still. And you can imagine where this little thing is, is how much movement you've got in either direction. So in this direction, we've got loads of movement. In this direction, we've got very little. And that's the direction that's facing the ground. And then finally, we've got suspension travel to go with it. And this is how much of this bar you're going to allow the suspension to actually use. So if you imagine there's an artificial limit because we've got it on 15%, just there and just there, it will not let the suspension travel any further than that. And you can fiddle with this, but basically the idea here is that if you've got a vehicle that's aimed to be off-roady and very bumpy terrain, you're going to want lots of suspension travel to soak up those bumps. If you're making a vehicle that's designed to travel on something that's flat and go quite quickly, you're going to want very little suspension travel to try and keep the car stable. So let's put this back to something like what it was on before, about 15%. And let's look at damping and strength, because these are the two that aren't very well explained. But if you were to think and try and picture a actual sort of damper and spring like you'd use in some car suspension, and I'll try and bring up a graphic at the side to just explain what I'm talking about. The damping here is that piston. It's the damper in the middle and the oil that's inside it. And this applies a consistent resistance to the piston opening and closing. So it doesn't matter whether you're opening it up or closing it, it doesn't matter whether you're compressing it or uncompressing it, this comp applies a consistent resistance. And unfortunately it's given to us in a percentage. But the idea would be, down here you're going to allow that piston to travel through the oil relatively quickly. The oil's not very thick. And then when you put it right up here, you've essentially got, I don't know, porridge in your suspension. Super, super duper thick, and it's really trying to resist the movement of that piston opening and closing. Now for the sort of vehicle we're making here, which is a road vehicle, we're not going to want it to have massive, massive amounts of dampening like this, but we want a fair bit. You want it to try and soak up some of the turning into the corners, but we're not expecting any bumps or anything like that, so maybe 30% is a good value. However, the strength, which is representing that spring around the outside, and what that does is it's saying how fast should the suspension go back to its normal position. So when you hit the ground and you compress your suspension up, how quickly should it go back to where it should be? And this is really easy to demonstrate if we turn the damping down to zero. So we turn the damping down to zero and we turn this strength down to zero. We will now be sagging our, our suspension like, as low as we can because there's no spring on our suspension anymore. There's nothing to hold it in position. And then if we go in here and we just turn that strength up to say 2%, 3%, that's going to put a very, very weak spring on our suspension, which is going to be really bouncy. So it's not quite going to be able to hold us stable. So let's just do that now. And unfortunately, because of the suspension travel limitations and our height offset, set all those back to normal, you can now see, look how bouncy we are. And that's because there's no oil in the suspension to slow down that bounce. It's just the spring bouncing up and down on itself. And we set that back to north, and you can see it drops back down onto the ground because we've taken the spring away. But if we do that same thing again, so let's get the bounce going. There we go, we're bouncing up and down, and then we add a tiny bit of damping. You're going to see this bounce is slowly going to slow down because there's now oil, and every time the suspension is opening and closing, it's resisting that movement. So that's the best analogy I can think of for explaining these two values. How you go about using them is going to depend on the role you want. So in this case, we've got a race car. We want it to stay really stable in the position we want it. So we want this, this thing to not have very much suspension travel, keep the body really level. We want it quite low to the ground. And then we don't want it to roll on the suspension too much because that doesn't help us with an off-road vehicle. We're trying to keep it, with an on-road vehicle, we're trying to keep it flat and we're trying to race with it. The damping, on the other hand, wants to be quite soft because we're not going over big heavy bumps. We want this car to be compliant. We want it to be trying to keep its wheels on the ground and remove any juddering, any sort of funny movements of the body. So we're going to keep the damping quite low. And now, hopefully, between the combination of these little things here and one final trick which I'm going to do, which is that I'm going to go onto the rear wheels and point out that we've actually got steering on the rear wheels, but it's only a tiny, tiny little bit. Now, I'm going to turn this up a little bit. But it's still going to be the case that the rear wheels are going to have 8 degrees and these front wheels have got 26, so there's a massive difference. And all this does is mean that the rear end of the car actually wants to follow the front end of the car when you're turning. If you can imagine if those rear wheels stayed straight as we turned with the vehicle, they're going to want to keep going in a straight line while the front of the car is trying to go around the corner. And that makes the rear end of the car flip over. So by combining all these things together, we should now have a car that doesn't roll handles quite nicely on here. It's not perfect. You will have a little bit of slide because it's slightly better to have slide than roll over completely. But you can now see we've managed to create a car that 
doesn't bounce around all over the place when it hits stuff. So when we go over these jumps, it's going to land nice and level. It's going to soak up that bump and keep the car at the right attitude. Looks like we could do with a little bit more rear end grip. The front has got a little bit too much control over how we're driving at the moment. <clears throat> But you can see how you can go about customizing your suspension setup for the surface and what each one of those values is going to do to help. So I've loaded the world back up again so I can demonstrate a little bit about off-road settings because obviously what we've built here has been designed for an on-road environment. It's designed to drive on blocks where they're nice and smooth, nice and flat. So in the corner here I've just put a little bit of bumpy terrain down and you'll see if we drive this vehicle in it'll go over it but it launches itself into the air. It's far too stiff, far, nowhere near compliant enough, and we're now beached because we don't have the ground clearance. So this vehicle is gonna need some changes to be appropriate for this sort of terrain. But those changes are relatively straightforward to pull off, even with a vehicle like this one. So let's jump out of this quickly, and I'll go and drop it somewhere where it's not beached so we can change the settings. And all I'm gonna change is the, the, the suspension settings. I'm gonna leave all the friction the same so that we get an idea of exactly what it is that's making all the difference. So if I just drop this, notice how it hits the ground. We drop it from about this sort of height, and notice when it hits the ground, it kind of bounces a little bit, and it's very, very, very rigid, which is helpful for when we're doing the on-road stuff, but very unhelpful here. So what we're going to do is jump in and we're going to set all of our suspension and the first thing we're going to do is give ourselves more suspension travel because obviously we're really low to the ground, that's not helpful. But much like with the racing one, we want to leave ourselves a little bit of room for the suspension to move in both directions. So if we go all the way to the top here, there's no movement left upwards. And especially off-road, if your wheels are moving around independently of each other on the suspension, that can be a big issue. So we're going to leave ourselves a bit of room on this side as well. And we're going to increase our suspension travel right the way up because we're going to want give in those wheels. Our, get, our goal now is for this car to be very compliant, have lots of give in it rather than be very rigid and hold ourselves in a set location. And then the important one is these two. And basically all we need to do to make this work is reverse them. Because instead of holding the whole car at a very steady height, getting it back to that height really quickly whenever there's an impact, we don't want that anymore. We want the give in the suspension. We want the suspension to be able to ride the bumps. So we need this strength turn right down. But then when it rides the bumps, we want it to absorb those impacts. We don't want it to just you know, be really loose like the one we've just seen, where the second it hits something that's solid, it pinged up into the air because there's nothing to soak it up. So we're going to turn the damping up as well. And we get that to about 75. Strength, maybe we have a, in fact, I'll stick with 20. You don't want, to, you don't want too much strength because that's what creates some of that bounce. And I've not changed anything else but these suspension settings. And we're going to go and give this car another go on that same piece of terrain behind that launched us up into the air. And you'll notice just changing those settings has actually made it turn better on this off-road environment as well. But if we lock into these lumps now, you can see it wants to stay on the ground. It's not getting, not getting beached on any of these stuff because we've got much, much more ground clearance. But also, when we hit these big lumps, it's not bouncing into the air like it was. The damping is soaking up those impacts. And because the springs aren't pushing us back into the same ride height immediately, they've got a bit of give in them, we're not launching ourselves into the air. So again, I'll come over here and actually hit this stuff with a reasonable amount of speed, and you'll see that we immediately go back down to the ground again. The suspension is soaking all of these bits and bobs up. However, if we now take this vehicle with these suspension changes back over to the on-road section over there, you'll notice that it's, it's not just the friction that makes all of the difference. So, also, there's a couple of these tiny little bumps in this surface, which this thing will, of course, soak up completely. You'll see we barely left the ground, unlike the other one, which completely leaves the ground over them. But we now come up here, and again, that whole jump was soaked much better, and try and turn. Oh, look, the roll's back. Because we've changed the suspension settings into a setup that, that's got too much compliance in it now. So I hope that helps you guys get an idea of how to set up the suspension, but also what all those damn settings mean. Because as I said, they're not explained particularly well, but because of the changes with wheels now, they are very, very useful. And it's very, very fun putting together vehicles with different purposes because they really do work. And the physics now really does start to resemble the sort of physics that applies to real cars. If you felt like I missed anything out, then please hit me up in the comments below or hit me up below as well as to what you want to see next. You know, I've sadly neglected this series quite a bit and I should be doing more of them in future. So what do you think I should be covering? What would you like to see more of in this series? And if, of course, if you did enjoy this video, please hit that like button. Please hit subscribe. It does really help me in the channel. And otherwise, I'll catch you guys next time.